It's helped farmers develop their own property plan. Local Land Services has developed a series of tools and we've developed a workbook which goes through the process of setting a vision and values and goal setting. Then it goes into information on the soils and the biodiversity and biosecurity and, and animal health. And then we've also developed a self-assessment toolkit and that enables you to self-assess what areas you're deficient in in terms of your knowledge and experience and where you might need to get some more help and advice. And we've also developed an online mapping tool which um, enables you to put in your street address or your lot and DP number and it comes up with an aerial or satellite photograph of your farm and there's several layers of information in there such as land capability, soils, biodiversity values, conservation values, hydrology features, the cadastry lines so that you can actually see the actual boundaries of your properties and your neighbouring properties. And then you can actually draw in that tool, you can draw what you want to do with your farm and it's a very useful tool for that planning and getting a picture of what you can do on your farm. Whether you're growing vegetables or fruit trees or grazing cattle or sheep, you need to understand what the requirements are of the land that you're on in order to produce that. And different councils vary in, in what you can do in certain locations. You need to understand those different legislative requirements and constraints. If you're growing pastures or crops or vegetables, you really need to understand the, the soil nutrition, its structure, its ability to withstand waterlogging, its ability to withstand dry periods, because all of that leads into how much production you can get off your land. For mixed farmers, if they've got some livestock, one of the biggest considerations is where to put fences and laneways and paddocks. How do you have a good paddock rotation? But once you see the layout of the land, you can often work out, oh, I can have movable electric fences and do strip grazing. And where you put windbreaks or where you might have biodiversity corridors. If you're a pure vegetable farm, you probably want to understand how do the soil types vary in the different paddocks. And the same paddock might have two or three different soil types in it. So you want to know where those boundaries are what vegetables you can grow, what sort of packing shed or processing shed you might need, the layout of, of paddocks or growing areas, whether you're going to have igloos or greenhouses. The slope are a major thing to consider. If you don't really want to grow vegetables over a seven degree slope. Another thing to consider is buffer zones or areas where you might have some vegetation that's being conserved and also stopping erosion from running from paddocks down to the river or creek lines. In addition, a really important part of any vegetable farm is a chemical shed and where that is and the bunding you might need to have on that. Regardless of whether you're a vegetable farm or mixed farm or pure grazing farm, the logistics of where trucks come in and get loaded and leave the farm, you want that to be as safe as possible. I mean safe in a biosecurity manner. If you can have the loading bays up front of the farm where they don't travel all over the farm in order to, to get a product to, uh, and take it off your farm because they might then spread disease. So you have that near the front gate and then you might have laneways to that area. And the aesthetics is something to, you know, particularly if you're living on the farm, you want the farm to be aesthetically pleasing. So you need to wrap all that up in your overall farm plan. Please reach out to us if you want to develop a, a property plan. Local Land Services has some tools and has some workshops that are available to help you develop a, a property plan for your farm and for your family.